One of the things that's galvanized research into consciousness science is new brain imaging and brain stimulation technologies. And at Sussex University, we've invested in some of these new methods. Faces are critical to how we behave in the world and being able to recognize, detect, and interpret faces is a key aspect of how we perceive uh, the world around us. So in fact, the brain is very good at seeing faces even when faces aren't there. We've all had the experience of looking at clouds in the sky and seeing a face. Understanding the brain as a prediction engine, something that's going about predicting the causes of its sensory input, can help us understand a variety of conditions. For instance, in schizophrenia, people often have perceptual hallucinations. They see things that aren't there. Uh, one way to understand this is that their predictions are having a greater effect, they're overwhelming the sensory data. Whereas most of us, without psychiatric uh, conditions, will still see faces in clouds. If you have schizophrenia, you're more likely to see patterns where no patterns exist. So the Sackler Center, we're very keen to link the basic science of consciousness to its clinical application. In fact, that's the remit of the whole center. So what we will do is studies in healthy subjects so we can understand how these predictive processes work in the normal case, and then we will apply them to psychiatric populations. So currently in the Sackler Center, we're studying a number of, of patient groups, people with schizophrenia, people with autism, people with severe anxiety, and just now also people with Tourette's syndrome. One of the things that's galvanized research into consciousness science is the availability of new brain imaging and brain stimulation technologies. And at Sussex University in the Sackler Center, we've invested in some of these new methods. One of the methods I'm most excited about is called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Now that is a long word, but that basically means injecting a very short but quite powerful pulse of energy into the brain just by holding a coil above your, above your um, scalp. And then we can use EEG or electroencephalography to listen to the response. So it's a bit like banging on the brain and listening to its echo. And what we find is that the pattern of echo that we get depends on, for instance, the level of consciousness that you have. And we can also use brain stimulation to transiently turn on or turn off part of the brain or generate a particular sensation. For instance, if you stimulate the back of the brain, uh, you might experience a brief flash of light. And by controlling somebody's conscious experience in that way, it gives us a very systematic means to investigate what's happening in the brain when you have an experience.